everybody, Jim Sammons here, and welcome to the Kayak Fishing Show Live. Kayak Fishing Show Live, as always, brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company. Today, we are having my favorite, Grapefruit Sculpin. Uh, this has been one of my favorites for a long time. It's very hot here in San Diego, so I need a cold beverage. Cheers. So our plan today is we've got the guys from Werner Paddles. I've been a Werner Paddle paddler for many, many years. Uh, in my opinion, there is no better paddle available, uh, and they're always doing cool new stuff. And I'm pretty excited that we get to, to introduce some new product today uh, that I've been able to actually uh work uh, with them on uh, testing out the prototype and i'm really excited about this paddle so with no further ado i'm going to bring the guys up three two one hey, hey jim, jim. Hey, hey. why is it not showing you on the screen hold on let me uh i think it still has me solo is the problem there we go there you are <laughs> hey, jim, how you doing thanks for having us on the show oh it's my pleasure you know i i absolutely love the paddles and um working with uh, you guys for many, many years now. So uh, pretty stoked to have you on here. Um, before we get into the, the what we really want to talk about, which is the new paddle, um, I was hoping maybe you give us a, a, maybe a short history of Warner Paddles. Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, Warner Sr., well, first off, Warner Paddles is a family-owned business, and our current president, Bruce, is the youngest son of Warner Sr. Warner Sr. was originally in the Swiss military, and that's where he kind of found a love of paddling while he was in the military. When he was in the Swiss military, he was in a non-combative injury, and so he was at the hospital recuperating and fell in love with his nurse, Martha. So... <laughs> Uh, their parents actually, though, ironically, did not really approve of their courtship. So they left Switzerland and moved to Toronto and ended up marrying in Toronto. Um, and then kind of did some time in Toronto. They moved down to the Northeast and uh, New England, like upstate New York area, I believe. And then eventually kind of migrated out west to the Pacific Northwest. So... At that time, when they were living here in the Pacific Northwest, there wasn't really an opportunity or a store for them to go to, to get boats, to get paddles, and to go out and do paddling. So Werner and Martha started making their own spray skirts, made boats, made paddles from what they could find and use to kind of make that equipment at the time. Um, then as, as their family grew, they started having their own children more and more equipment was kind of being needed. They started loaning some of their equipment out to other friends in the area. And so they kind of then created a logo really originally. So that circle that's our logo is a W and an M for Werner and Martha. And then the circle kind of represents the family of trust. So oh, they cool. started, yeah, so they started putting that on the gear that they were making in their garage kind of as a way to keep track of their inventory, if you will, as they loan things out and get it back. And then it just kind of grew from there into, hey, this business idea. So then in 1965, Warner Paddles was born officially as a, a company under a different name, but then it became Warner Paddles Incorporated. Um, and they've been making paddles specifically ever since. All our paddles are handcrafted right up here in Mineral, Washington. We're about 45 minutes north of Seattle, nestled up in the foothills of the Cascade Mountains with the Sky, Sky Comish River, 10 minutes out of the door. So a lot of guys get off of work and head up to the sky and go paddling right after work. Oh, that's, that's so cool. And, and of course, we love the fact that it's a, a great American-made product. You know, so many of our sponsors are, you know, putting locals to work. You know, there's nothing really better than that. Um, actually, I was just thinking about the... Uh, um, the names of the paddles that I always get corrected on. Uh, I, I seem to always say them wrong. Um, what? Kamano? <laughs> uh, Kamano. Kamano. Yeah, Kamano. Kamano. <laughs> uh, is Callista correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Uh, there was another one that I got wrong. Um, I was corrected after doing it. I don't know if it was a Shuna. Um, That's correct. There was another one. Um, my mind's gone blank, but the Camano is an island 
uh, just here off the coast in the Northwest, about 30, 30, 40 minutes north of where we are right now in Monroe, Washington is, is Camino Island. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So, yeah, so a lot of local names and a uh, great local product. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about paddles uh, in general? I mean, what, what, I mean, I know the easiest way to do is to paddle with a paddle to know why it's better than another paddle. But what do you think sets Warner apart? Well, you know, our philosophy is, you know, your paddle is really your motor, right? And uh, this is what you're physically utilizing to pull yourself through the water. And it can make for a very comfortable day or a very uncomfortable day if you have something heavy, right? So you want something that's efficient, easy on your joints, and, and something that's going to get you out to the fishing grounds as fast and as efficiently as possible. Um, fish, uh, the paddle is also, you know, a source of uh, power. It's very uh, easy to use while you're fishing. Uh, very uh, easy to get you around. It's very maneuverable. So, you know, we like to combine uh, some of the best uh, materials in the world, be it carbon, fiberglass, and utilize our in-house U.S. craftsmanship to bring the product that you see to life. So if somebody's looking for a paddle, what would you say are, you know, things that they should look for? You always want to look for a paddle that has what we call light swing weight. You can pick up a paddle. Anybody can build a light paddle, right? But the weight has to, and materials have to be distributed evenly throughout the paddle so that when you actually swing it through the water, it's efficient, um, easy on your joints again, and uh, is, is going to uh, allow you to not uh, get so tired. Um, you know, obviously, there's different materials, right? A carbon, we all know, is light. But what else? It's stiff. So when that stiff blade hits the water and you're pulling yourself through the water, the stiffer the blade, the more efficient. Fiberglass is a great material. Um, it's got high impact resistance. You get to see these amazing colorful patterns that, that we bring in high definition colors. And then we also offer an injected molded style blade. Uh, we have a, a series of in, injected molded hooked products uh, that uh, also offer uh, a great stroke uh, at a, an affordable price. Uh, we have uh, say hello to a couple people here. Uh, Patricia saying hi from Whidbey Island. Um, she's also said Patricia said. Uh, well, it scrolled down on me. Uh, Dustin said that's an awesome uh, background story. Mike McKenna, hi from Texas. Uh, Dave Thompson, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, Cody Carpenter. Team Warner, he says Brooks, um, and JD Drosser, hello from Washington. Um, Dave Thompson had a question. Uh, he says, with the increase in motorized kayaks, are you seeing your sales slow, or is the volume continuing to increase because of the increase in kayakers in general? Well, you know, you know, obviously, uh, paddle sports evolves. Um, you know, we're not necessarily seeing a, a slowing per se. Um, we do know that there are more options for customers uh, out there right now. Um, our uh, philosophy, um, you know, is that a traditional kayak utilizes a double bladed uh, paddle to get folks around in the water. And we're utilizing a, a hashtag called hashtag paddle for fish where we highlight tradition, performance, um, and the fact that it's pretty economical to use a paddle. Um, sure, pedal boats and pedal drives have their place, but when you want to get out through a surf break uh, or you want a nice quick stroke to get you to where you need to be, there is no substitute uh, for a paddle. So again, we're supporting the tradition. Obviously, we make paddles, uh, but obviously there is a place uh, for um, you know, a hands-off product as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think there, you know, th th there's a place for for both sides. I'm a paddler. I prefer paddling. Um, I can't jump in a pedal boat for the most part without um, being fatigued in 10 minutes, but I can paddle all day. Um, I think the biggest problem, and I've said it before, that we see is people not learning proper paddle technique. You know, it, it's not rocket science, but, you know, learning how to paddle properly is going to 
make that paddle so much more efficient. And that's what it's all about. And that's why I love what, you know, the, the Caminos and the Callista, they're just such an efficient paddle. And it gives you that reliability as well. So then you're not, when you're out spending long days on the water or you're going far offshore, if you're especially out in the salt, you're going to have that reliability and that paddle will always be right there for you. Exactly. You know, the, the simplicity yep. of having something that you know you don't have to maintain and you know is always going to work. Yeah. Yep. And I think you make a good point, Jim, uh, about technique, right? Um, you know, it's, it's a poor workman that blames his tool is what my grandfather always used to say. And uh, when you look at the paddle stroke itself, uh, if you're paddling correctly, you're recruiting your bigger muscle groups, your abdominal muscles, your legs. You're not just going out and using your arm. So applying that technique, whether you're fishing, speed kayaking, stand-up paddling. Yeah, it's a, and that's the problem. It's so many kayak fishermen, in all honesty – are terrible paddlers um and they they never take the time to learn how to paddle correctly i mean I said it's not rocket science but just a little bit of instruction to get some good technique to use that whole body use your core it's yeah it, the, the argument's always like oh well your your legs are stronger than your arms well that's true but if you're paddling with just your arms you're paddling wrong <laughs> right and don't get me started paddling with your paddle upside down <laughs> uh you know I, I don't know if you guys saw the video i did on that it was kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing we did some time ago but it's like come on turn your paddle over it's made that way for a reason um aaron cronk has a question what kind of warranty do the paddles have so we have a, a limited uh one-year warranty uh from time of purchase and we stand behind our products. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, our warranties, uh, our warranty returns are about less than a quarter of a percent. And uh, in general, in the outdoor world, uh, 3% return would be pretty good. Yep. So uh, the, the key is, is, is we are a U.S. handcrafted product. We stand behind it. And uh, should you have a problem with your product, we get it back. Uh, we evaluate that product at the time and either deem it a warranty or a repair. Uh, you know, I've been paddling with Warners for a very long time, and I've never, ever had an issue with a Warner paddle. Um, I mean, they're just solid. And I think one of the things that I appreciate the most about the Warners, particularly when you're in the two-piece, and of course, for me, the four-piece paddles for when I travel, which I think is just having that available to people is amazing. Um, but the two-piece paddles feel like a one-piece. Yeah. You know, there is no wiggle there's there's none of that that you, you will find in in other paddles that, that i've had in my hand anyway and as long as you stay on top of that that maintenance of you know after a day out on the water and the salt making sure that you kind of rinse it out with some fresh water and just kind of take care of it that way and store it as a two-piece you should that's a great investment on something you're going to paddle and have for quite a long time well right you know and and I think the thing that, that, that I, I tell clients a lot when I'm doing a guided trip and I, we always go over all the equipment and I'll let them hold all my, you know, go from a basic Camino up to the Callista and it's okay. Well, you know, the thing is, the, as you mentioned, it is your motor. Uh, do you want a Volkswagen motor or do you want a Porsche motor? You know, it, it does make a difference to make that investment. I'll see guys with thousands of dollars of fishing gear on the back of their kayak, and they've got the junkiest $50 paddle, and they wonder why they don't like paddling. You know, it's like, well, your paddle weighs five pounds, you know. <laughs> make that investment in a good paddle. It's going to last you for years and years, and it's going to make a huge difference in your ability to cover water. Um Let's see, Mike McKenna, how do you measure a paddle best, or how do you measure a paddle for best stroke? Well, we use a combination, you know, measuring a paddle is, is pretty simple. It involves two components, and one of which is your height and your boat width. Um, you know, utilizing uh, correct technique for a stroke would be long, straight arms, light, loose grip, not over gripping. Uh, you know, when you go to golf, uh, you, go, you go golfing. If you're going to overgrip your golf club, every time I shank it, right? 
right? So a light loose grip, um, perhaps a bent shaft paddle, which is more ergonomic. Um, those, those types of things help. Um, making sure your, your paddle is properly sized is a really key component. If it's too short, you're gonna be hitting the sides of your boat. If it's too long, you're gonna be paddling wide and your boat is gonna do one of these. So size, fit are key components to a good day. Yeah, and, and it, you know, to your point, I mean, you can get away with a longer paddle on a narrow kayak if it's a long kayak, because it's not going to want to wander. But if you're in a really short kayak, you certainly don't want to be paddling at, you know, a 260 and having these really long strokes. Right. Um, you know, the height of the seats now makes a big difference and everything else. Uh, Henrik, my friend from Sweden. Uh, hey, Jim, which is your favorite model and why? And thanks for the last time. Delarno was a blast. I just went on a trip with him to Sweden and it was fantastic. Henrik, my favorite paddle is hands down the Callista. I mean, they're that foam core blade that has such a light and lively feel when you're paddling it. That swing weight is so light and, you know, getting older, having it such a nice light paddle and the crankshaft on it for me, for if I'm really doing a lot of multi-day, putting in some miles, you just cannot beat the Callista. Um, I spend an awful lot of time with all the other paddles and they are all fantastic without a doubt. But again, you know, if I can only pick one, <laughs> I'm going with the Callista. Uh, Sean Russell, you are killing me. What's the announcement? Sean? Oh, sorry, Sean. Uh -huh. you got, Sean, you got to wait because <laughs> we've got more questions to answer and that's not one of them yet. Um, Michael Guerrero says he is here now. Um, let's see, Dustin paddles will always have a purpose. What if your pedal drive fails too shallow water, et cetera. That's why I choose to paddle. That's a very good, point. A good answer, Dustin. Um, uh, this is my friend Egowitz from Spain. Hi guys, what do you think of the paddles that can be dismounted in two pieces? Is there a big difference in efficiency comparing with a one piece paddle? I so, think if you got a cheap one, yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely, I'll go ahead and take that one. Yeah. And really the, the ferrule system, which is the, the joint at which your paddles go together is very proper, uh, or it's very important um, to have a nice proper day on the water. And the tighter that joint is, uh, the more efficient you're going to be. When you have movement in that joint, it's going to be hard on your wrists. You're going to be inefficient in the water. And that's why we've had the Smart View Ferrule System uh, for many years now, which is the system by which all are measured by. And basically, it is a two piece paddle with a one piece feel. So anytime you pick a paddle up off the water, off the shelf, you always want to grab that thing in the middle and see if there's any give. And there really shouldn't. Uh, that would be the main difference in efficiency. In general, two-piece paddles are slightly heavier, but we're talking, you know, fractions, fractions. of an ounce. Yeah. Um, but really paying attention to that ferrule system and making sure you have a good one, like our smart view ferrule, is, is a key component to efficiency. Yeah, having that adjustability in that, um, because I, I feather my paddle minimally. I do a 30-degree feather. Um and what I always tell people is that if you can just look at your stroke and the angle that your blade is hitting the water and that ability to just tweak it just a little bit so it's in the right position when you're making your stroke. So the, the blade is in position. You're not having to rotate the wrist. So yeah, um, less fatigue and you'll end up with more a more efficient stroke each and every time. Yeah, exactly. And it, it does make a, a, a huge difference because uh, quite honestly, if I go with a straight bladed paddle, and I go to take a stroke, I will miss the water or right. it'll hit the wrong way. And you know what it's like when you hit that and it slices into the water and you feel like you're going to fall out of your kayak. So <laughs> having that paddle that you can adjust just perfectly uh, to your stroke makes a huge difference. Um, Mike says he loves the Werner designs. Um, Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Let's see. There was something. There was one. There was a question back here, and I must have scrolled past it. Um, oh well, maybe it'll come back around. Um, so, 
Oh, we've talked about the um, the paddles that, that I like. You know, actually, here's a, a question that maybe we could t- touch on before we touch on the big announcement. Um, when choosing a paddle, ver- you know, the, obviously there are different blade shapes. And we know that high angle versus low angle. How does somebody know if they're a high angle or a low angle paddler? There's so... There's a couple of different ways. Um, we have found that about 80% or so of people are mostly that traditional low angle style of paddling. So you're going to find that paddle blade is going to be narrower, longer, and kind of more rectangular. And that's that more kind of loose core um, paddle stroke, where if you're more of a high angle paddler, you're, it's a little bit more of an aggressive stroke. You will get a little bit more power. And that's why those blades are shorter and wider for that prop more proper catch so most high angle paddlers know that they're high angle paddlers and if you're starting out more than likely you're probably a low angle paddler and then there's kind of that yeah i think i think for the most part um as kayak anglers because it is a fairly relaxed thing you're going to be a low angle i'm a high angle paddler when i'm launching through the surf you know, yeah. when I am really digging and sprinting, but that's such a such a low percentage of my day that it's more important to have the proper low angle paddler or the low angle paddle, I should say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Both on your boat now. Yeah. <laughs> Carry two paddles. Um, so I, I think we, let me look. Uh, <clears throat> Sean Russell, I started using Warner paddles about a year ago. I've noticed the Camino is holding up a lot better than other manufacturers I've experienced. Could you touch on the design differences that make your paddle so much more durable? Well, quite simply, uh, we have over 50 years of, of paddle building experience uh, under uh, uh, under our senior management here. And uh, it takes time. And really, uh, I think it's harder than most people think to design a paddle. Um, I touched on this a little earlier. Materials are important, but also how those uh, materials are distributed throughout the paddle. There's a lot of load points. There's a lot of things that that take uh, careful consideration. Um, testing and R and D is also something that um, we have a very stringent program, and our validation process um, is is quite timely. So. Um, in order to preserve our integrity and keep the best product on the water. Uh, you know, we also uh, adhere to a, a strong, a really high quality control standard as well. So anything that has left this building, it's generally been touched by six pairs of hands and it's not going to go out the door unless we have thoroughly tested, tested it and, uh, you know, thoroughly vetted and know that it's going to be good on the water. Good answer. Uh Andrew O'Brien, good afternoon. <laughs> Bobby Clark says he's high angle all day. Um, so, you know, something to consider with a high angle stroke where your hands are going to be above your shoulders, you're going to have more power. Um, you know, you can also fatigue quicker. Um, so and some people go back and forth with a hybrid stroke. Yeah, and again, that's that's what I do, and I know a lot of people will go with the high angle um, paddle because they want that power launching through the surf. But like I said, for me, it's such a small percentage of the day. I like the low angle paddle um, because it is less fatiguing, and you know when you talk about on your joints and everything through the course of the day. um, I think something that should also be mentioned. yeah, I will often hear people, you know, they'll say, that, well, they need to wear gloves while they're paddling because they're getting blisters. You know, if you're getting blisters from your paddle, uh, okay. A, you probably don't have a very nice one. The shaft is probably really bad. The other thing is you shouldn't have to be holding the paddle that tight. If you have a nice paddle like we have with Warner, it is so well balanced that you can have that really relaxed grip on the paddle. I'm um, sure. Again, we're doing that high angle, really digging. I'm holding that paddle much tighter. But through my cruising through the day, I mean, most of the time I'm paddling with an open hand. You know that that push is open handed. You know, so between each stroke, I'm opening my palm just to relax those fingers a little bit. I'm also not wrapping my thumb around the paddle. It's usually just flat palm. I'm just gripping it with my fingers. So I, I 
you know, like I said, I, that's one of the things I've always noticed with Warners. They're so well balanced. And uh, I had a paddle previous to uh, working with Warner that I did have to hold tighter. I always felt like it wanted to roll out of my hands. Right. And like I said, if you're if you feel like you need to wear gloves and you're getting blisters and all that, try relaxing your grip. And if your paddle is just giving you those kinds of problems, upgrade to a Warner without a doubt. Um, Susie Smothers says hello. Um, Hi, man. <laughs> hey, Joel. Joel says I have enjoyed Warner paddles. Problem is changing seat height. Hmm. That's what can we do about that? I don't know. What should we do about that? And with that, guys, what can we do about that? I think it's time. Screen. I think it's time. I think we have a solution for Joel. Absolutely. Do you have something to show us, Jim? I, I do. Are you showing it or am I showing it? You go why for it. You go you, for why don't you throw it up there and then we'll talk about it. Okay. So we have, and I gave myself the screen solo, if you can see this, and it's kind of hard from here, uh, is the new, whoa, lever lock. See if I can get that on the screen. If you can see it, yeah. lever lock, adjustable length, paddle this one is in the hooked kameno bass pattern um this one is adjustable from 240 to 260 and i think the thing that impressed me the most of it in the testing that i've done with this now is again back to that still having a one pat a one piece paddle feel this yeah. thing is so solid and now of course it, it's adjustable you know infinitely adjustable uh on your uh feathering so just so many great features about it absolutely and, and a great description jim and i'd love to tell you a little bit about how this mechanism actually works yeah i'm going to give you the whole screen so you got yeah. a little bit more room to work with there yeah yeah here so <clears throat> this mechanism works on a couple of different concepts uh, one of which is tension Right, and the lever lock system. There's actually a cable running down through this ferrule right here, and it basically uh, utilizes a lever that applies tension to this rubber stopper here. And as it pulls down on the stopper, it creates more space inside the shaft, which uh, creates, um, you know, basically, uh, you know, it, it locks down, it expands, and locks into the shaft easier. Um, and tightly too, and that's been the, the the issue with current models that are on the market is it's not they haven't been a tight dependable system. So I'll put this thing back together, and uh, you say you know maybe I want it at about two fifty. Um, I set it where I want it. I let the latch down, and I have a nice tight one piece feel. And so what is the application for this, right? And we just had a question regarding seat height. As we go up in seat heights, we're going to need more paddle to get to the water. How about changing boats, right? You want to jump in your buddy's boat. Uh, let's say their boat, your boat's 54 inches and their boat is 60 inches wide. You're going to need a longer paddle, right? You go ahead and flip open the lever, open it up to where you feel is comfortable. We also have our smart view style um, well, offset. up a little and higher. All right. There you go. So you can see that you can dial in your offset, and I'm going to flip this around. So every 15 degrees, you can go ahead and dial in. If you like 30 degrees, you set the line on 30. Very similar to our current Smart View system we have right now. It is also available in a 220 to 240 as well. So it comes in two different lengths: a 220 to 240 as well as the 240 to 260 centimeter. Awesome. And you're, you're answering questions that are coming up at the bottom. So that's, yeah. that's perfect. Gonna, um, go ahead. No, go ahead. You, you go ahead. Okay. So we're going to offer this in both our Kameno and our Shuna models in our premium fiberglass. Uh, we're also going to offer this in three of our most popular um, patterns, which we have our HD bass pattern, our trophy, 
um, as, as well, a trophy charcoal, as well as lime drift. So three uh, colors to choose from and very nice, confident, dependable system now on the market. Uh, we're really excited to bring this one to market and it'll be available uh, early September at your local Warner dealer. This is so cool. And I'll tell you guys uh, my story with this. Like I said, I've had a chance to use this for a little while now. Uh, on my recent trip to um, Panama, I brought uh, my normal uh, Camino with me and I brought this one with me and I was using the new one because it is testing a new product. Um, my son who uh, was in a much, my son's very tall. He's like almost 6'5 compared to my 5'10 uh, and he was also in a high seated boat and a wider boat and I was paddling the Kraken. So he wanted to, to, um, to paddle. So I just traded paddles with him. I went from my normal 240, extended it out to 260 for him, and it was perfect. So, you know, to your point of, of jumping from kayak to kayak, from being in a high seat, low seat, or in a standing position, uh, it, it really was awesome. And like I said, my most impressive thing was it definitely, again, has that solid one piece feel. Um, and if you guys didn't get uh, the message earlier, if you like, comment, share, even in the replays within the next 24 hours, somebody's going to have a chance to win one of these. We will randomly se select someone who participates in this show today to win one of these paddles. Now, it's not going to be shipped right away. They're still working on finally manufacturing, but they will. Uh, what did you, when did you say they would be available to ship? September. Like the first week of September after Labor Day. That's just right around the corner. Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, Russell, this is such a great idea. I can't believe this hasn't already been done. Great job guys. Uh, dang it. Now I have to get another Warner paddle. <laughs> uh, do we have, uh, Dave, jo Dave Thompson wants to know, do you have a retail, uh, ready for it? Absolutely. Uh, in both the Camino and Shuna, this one will retail for 306. That's right up there that's that's a, you know that's that's n for a good paddle that's that's not a problem um there was another quite uh well again can you repeat there was when you, when can they buy them when do you think they'll be in shops september 4th we will start shipping them so look for them in your local dealer uh mid-september early to mid-september and you can go to your shop right now and ask them to put one on order for you uh, Jeremy, Jeremy uh, has a good question. Is that internal cable stainless steel? And how about the exposed metal pieces? Absolutely. And, and this mechanism, mechanism is designed to hold up to salt water, all the environmental conditions that we run into. Um, you know, while you're out there on the water, water while it's, you know, whether it's hot, cold, um, salty conditions, muddy conditions, um, you know, you want to keep this thing clean by you know, rin rinsing it with fresh water every two or three uses. Um, it is adjustable, and you can see there's a little nut right there. And by turning that nut clockwise, you can actually create more tension um, or less tension. It's a 10 millimeter. It's a 10 millimeter nut, and we recommend that you go in like small increment quarter quarter turns, kind of test it out, see if get where it's at, and then. It's worth mentioning that this me uh, style mechanism has been used on uh, stand-up paddles for, oh, close to eight years now. And so uh, it has been thoroughly tested, and we've thoroughly tested this with our group of athletes, Jim himself included, and put a lot of time on the water with this thing. So we're confident in it. Yeah, I'm just looking at this one. Um, like I said, I've been using it here in San Diego. I've been using it. I used it down in Panama. I used it in Sweden you know, a lot of salt water and it still looks brand new. So usually, you know, that kind of thing is going to show right away uh, yeah. if, it, if it's not good stainless and it looks to be very good quality stainless steel. So that's, uh, that's always a good thing. Um, let's see. Uh, and you said 240 to 260 and 220 to 240. 240. 240. So we cover everything from 220 to 260 essentially. Yeah, right. I like I like Jason Potts comment here. A full quiver of paddles in one. Nice job, Warner. 
Uh, we just answered that. This is probably going to be a no. <laughs> Kevin Costello says, will this be available as an aftermarket upgrade to existing paddles? Unfortunately not. Um, you know, this mechanism is uh, basically put in place with epoxy and our current smart view mechanism would not accommodate this. Um, I was wondering, uh, actually, is this paddle shaft a little smaller diameter than what I'm used to? Slightly smaller. Um, okay. Good observation. Good, good observation. Um, and it's designed to accommodate the lever lock sleeve. Um, our paddle still is ovalized as well, so it's indexed um, at, on the right side. Um, the idea is that because this system or this piece protrudes into the bottom, you weren't able to ovalize. This, this on piece the left. is round, but your right hand control is ovalized. And the idea behind ovalizing a shaft is, you know, your hand's not perfectly round, right? It's right. more of an egg. So your hand is going to fit. Uh, more ergonomically correct over an oval shaft. And you can see it there in Jim's hand. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And what were the patterns you said it was going to be available in? So trophy charcoal, which is a, a kind of our black um, scaly looking pattern, our bass pattern, as well as our lime drift pattern. Which is kind of after the mahi, the catch line drift. Oh, okay. And all this information will be available to see on our website at WarnerPaddles.com. Just follow the links to fishing paddles. We'll put this that up there. HD pattern, um, and we put a lot of time into uh, replicating, um, you know, some of our most sought after species uh, for kayak fishermen and women. Uh, here's a good question from Kevin Costello. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's actually from Ross. Uh, I may have missed it, but how much will this paddle weigh? In my experience, that can be a huge concern for longer, longer paddling sessions. Hey Ross, thanks for your question. So the Camino will be weighing in for the 240 to 260, which is the longer length paddle that weighs in at 30 ounces. And then the Shuna is 30.75 ounces. So it's really so, well. Let's see, let's compare. This. So the two forty to two sixty. What would be the difference between a, a regular two sixty? Right. What's so your the, weight, the weight difference? Is going to be you know two to two to three ounces depending on the length. So not a massive penalty for all that you get in value. Um, you know, considering the twenty inches, the mechanism, uh, yeah. it's it's very very small. Uh, Kevin says, I guess he'll have some Shunas for sale soon. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what Joel is asking here. He says, how about a rubber or sponge type fitting? Um, That's what, what it utilizes, this stopper in here. And I'll walk up to the yeah. camera. So that washer actually squeezes and i'm gonna yeah, hold this here yeah so as the cable pulls this direction it squeezes this metal washer against this rubber stopper and that expands inside of the shaft creating friction which allows for that very tight fit right and, and it's a it's a snug fit to begin with so it doesn't really need to expand a ton yes, and that's what gives it that really good solid feel yeah uh, Michael says paddle is sweet. Um, so could you back to, you know, initial questions that we were talking about earlier. Can you exp explain why a paddle is made the way it's made and why we need to hold it right side up? So I don't have to tell people again, maybe you can tell people. Yeah. So you can see right here, the way I'm holding this, this is an asymmetrical paddle, right? We don't build paddles equally on either side. And the reason for that is when you put it in the water, the surface area meets the water most efficiently. When I'm the power face of this blade and I'm pulling myself through the water, by having this asymmetrical shape that's at an angle, you're going to get a more efficient stroke. Um, and that's why technique is good. Um, you know, if, if you're paddling a, 
a high angle paddle too wide, your boat's kind of going to go back and forth. If you're paddling your paddle backwards and using the back face of the blade, that's really going to slow you down. And that's, <laughs> that's completely off. And we see people doing that all the time and we try not to laugh, but uh, we always try to correct folks and tell them that you should be able to read the Warner logo if you're paddling correctly and your blade is going the right yeah, direction. As I say, if you can read it, it's right. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, Joel kind of explains it for for ha- for the hands on the shaft. So I'm assuming he means like a, a sponge-ish, rubberish sleeve, hypalon sleeve over the paddle shaft. Um, so, you know, that would be personal preference. We don't advocate or recommend any aftermarket grips or tapes or even gloves really, unless it's something that is needed. It's a personal preference. By having your hand directly connected uh, to the paddle, you're gonna get the best control, the best performance, and you're gonna be closest to the water, better feel. Yeah, Yeah, and and as I was saying earlier, you know, that kind of leads to that having too tight of a grip on your paddle. um, And maybe you're having to have that because you have an inferior paddle. If you've got a good paddle, you don't need that because the paddle isn't wanting to twist in your hand so you can have that nice light grip. Um, I think adding things like that are the things that actually lead to people getting blisters um, because you are kind of holding onto that tighter and they're slightly abrasive. I mean, the the shaft on these paddles is is very, very smooth. You're also adding ounces. And you're adding weight. Uh, Yeah, well, I honestly forever used uh, a paddle leash uh, because I have a tendency of putting my paddle in the water and then I'm like, why am I adding weight to my paddle? I mean, I, I you pay all this money for for this super high end, super lightweight paddle, and I'm adding a leash to it that adds weight to it. I'm like, you know what? I don't use them anymore. I just make sure that I've always got my paddle in a paddle keeper up on the deck while I'm fishing. And um, <laughs> uh, let's see, D- JD, um, Unreal Technology built in an epic paddle by the best of the best in the paddling game. Wow, that nice compliment, JD. Thanks, JD. Uh, Thank you. Edgar says he definitely likes and needs this. Um, Egoitz, the fixing technology. Egoitz's English is really poor. The guy needs to learn how to speak English better. Come on, Egoitz. Uh, He's actually going to come and visit me from Spain here uh, in a few weeks. The fixing technology is very good. You can change the angle or the length and looks that the system fix the two parts perfectly. And the design is very nice. I loved it. (laughs) Adding to my shopping basket. Cool, you know, it's, um, if he's coming to visit you in a couple of weeks, take him to your local dealer down there in San Diego. <laughs> uh, Jason Potts, everyone should take a self-rescue and paddling course, regardless of how long you've been on the water, you'll learn something guaranteed. Um, and, and I, you know, I say that all the time, you know, take the time to go get some paddling instruction. And even if, um, you think you're a decent paddler, having somebody who is, very skilled at instruction, having somebody who observes your stroke, because it's so hard to see yourself and know exactly what you're doing. So, you know, it's a, it's a small investment to make you that much more efficient on the water. And what, what does that mean? It means being able to not be able to paddle just out, but be able to paddle back at the end of a long day. You know, uh, it, to me, it makes such a big difference. Um, Jeremy says, looks like it's time for an upgrade. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I, obviously, um, and my wife is saying hi to Egoids. Obviously, everybody's loving this thing. Um, and like I said, I, I don't promote stuff that I don't believe in. And this is, is, is very, very nice. And like I said, just to see what a big difference. Like I said, I mean, I, I go on a trip and I will jump from kayak to kayak when we're on trips all the time. I'll go from fishing offshore in the Kraken and then I'm next thing you know, we're fishing the flats in a mayfly, which is super wide or the big rig. And I, I, I've always found if I had a paddle that was too short, when you get onto those wider boats, you tend to do more leaning and reaching, uh, which ended up fatiguing my back. So having the proper length paddle and now having a paddle that you can adjust from one for every boat you get in, I think is just, just amazing. And to have one that feels so good. I know there have been other adjustable length paddles out there in the past, but they just never felt right. 
And, and this one, um, like I said, the main thing to me is that it's still like my smart view ferrules on my other paddles. It just feels so rock solid. Thank you. I mean, you know, it's been a year, year and a half of development from R and D and validation, as we've talked about with the, the testing process and getting out to, to you and to others that have been on the team. Um, giving us feedback to make sure. So when we do finally bring it to market, you know, we know that it's going to be that solid product and really uh, right off the bat, be able to take people out to where they want to go so they can focus on fishing and have a great time on the water doing that. And that absolutely. You know, I think the other thing is listening to consumer demand, um, but also waiting until you have the right product to bring to market. It, it's simple to, uh, you know, hear requests and go after it and want to build it and you get into the R&D process, but you want to do it right. You want to do it Warner right. Um, so that's why we, we listen to your followers, Jim, fishermen and fisherwomen from all over and make sure that we uh, take these demands and you know, take them seriously. Right. And, and I've seen products rush to market. Uh, because they, you know, as they see a need and they try to fill it, they try to fill it too fast and it, it doesn't always get done correctly. So, yeah, sometimes you got to take that time to get it right. And it, it seems like with this paddle, you guys have done it. Um, Cody has a comment, says, I need a paddle that can take a beating. Warner delivers. Uh, yeah, they are. And, you know, one thing, something that I wanted to comment on. Uh, you often hear people say that, you know, they want to get fiberglass because it's so much tougher uh, than the carbon fiber. Don't downgrade the carbon fiber, man. It's actually a lot tougher than you think. Uh, you know, I, I beat the heck out of my paddles and hitting them on rocks and everything else. And the, the carbon fiber still holds up really, really well. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at the makeups of the two materials. Obviously, we know carbon, uh, it's light. It does have the best strength to weight ratio, but the thing about fiberglass is it is really highly impact resistant. And we, if you can see here, you, if you look at the blade makeup, we actually have more material in the tip right here. Oh, nice. For those who really want to push off the bottom, uh, pushing off rocks, reefs, things like that, fiberglass is a great option, but carbon is the Porsche as you mentioned, Jim, and it really is going to give you your best bang for your buck and also hold up very well. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, yeah, let's be honest. I mean, like I said, I'm not getting any younger. I mean, I'm 56 years old. Uh, I want every advantage I can get and as minimal amount of stress on my body. So having a good paddle makes such a huge difference. Uh, having that crankshaft for me, um, you know, just so making that investment in the good paddle, not only makes a difference in how well you do today, but your ability to get on the water again tomorrow and the next day, you know, when you're doing multi-day trips, having a good paddle makes a huge, huge difference. Yeah. Um, Sean actually had a, a question. I, I know taking paddling cast is best, but isn't there paddling videos on the Werner Paddles website? There are. You can head over to our YouTube channel and or to Werner TV on our uh, on WernerPaddles.com. And there are quick, they're great digestible little one to two minute videos that are, if you want to brush up on what exactly is swing weight or how best do I need to hold my paddle or how best do I take care of my smart view feral system. We have these little videos there that will offer those little tips and those kind of late night digestible yeah, and, and just to add to that, there really is no substitute to a good class and good instruction from an expert, say an ACA instructor, uh, because you learn more than just paddling technique. You learn about conditions, tides, uh, you know, water coming up and down, rivers, those types of things. And I would recommend anybody who's starting out um, to take a class and, and listen and pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, just having even even if you're already, you know, proficient in most of the skills, you know, having somebody who can actually watch you paddle and and look at your stroke and just give you a few tips on on what you're doing right or wrong. I mean, it's going to make a huge difference uh, because you can't see yourself. Uh, Jeremy also has another question. He says, my only concern is the ruggedness of the lever. If it breaks, will Warner repair it? So again, I'll, I'll go back to um, you know my earlier statement. Um, if you do have trouble with the Warner product, 
Uh, the process is, you know, we get it back, we take a look at it. Uh, we have engineers that have been here for many, many years uh, that will evaluate the product, either deem it to be something that is our uh, on us as a warranty or offer a reasonable price for a repair. So do you guys do a lot of that? Um repair type stuff somebody had an issue with their paddle ran it over their car or something need to yeah, replace a blade yeah if something flew out on the highway you know one of our biggest segments is uh, one of our bigger segments is white water paddles right and we have these guys flying off waterfalls and they're obviously going to run into certain problems and break <laughs> it so, uh yeah so we do we will do a repair as well and um you can get a hold of us via our 800 number or our website for instructions on how to do that. Is there i I'm sure there's a fee. I mean, if somebody's fault, they did something, but uh, no reasonable pricing on getting something repaired, a blade fix, rep replaced. Absolutely. That's awesome. And, and again, I mean, people got to understand this is a made in the USA product. So, um, you know, it's all about reputation. And I mean, that's why you've been around for so many years. If you guys didn't hear the initial story of how Werner got started, uh, go back to the beginning of this, watch the replay. And and uh, they gave a nice story about how Werner got started, which is um, very informative. And, and again, it, it's that said, you know, we work with Jackson Kayak, you know, made in America, Siegler Reels, made in America, Yak Attack, made in America. You know, I'm proud that we're able to do that. And obviously, not all of the companies we work with are, and you, you just can't. I mean, but I'm, I'm, I'm so glad whenever we can work with a, a company that's putting, you know, our people to work. Um, Sean says a basic ACA paddle class is less than $50 and is such a great investment. You'll use the information gained every time you go out fishing in your kayak. And again, I mean, I, I've always said it. You know, besides just the paddling skills, your basic safety skills. If you don't know how to do a self rescue, you have no business being in water that's over knee deep. Um, and but I run into it all the time. I mean, I had a client out with me, uh, and ex I always say an experienced kayak angler uh, came out with me, and we get out there. He flips the kayak with the hatch open, floods the boat doesn't know how to self rescue. Uh, it took two of us to get him back in the kayak. Uh, it, it's, you know, that should be a skill that, you know, don't tell me you're an experienced kayak fisherman if you don't know how to self rescue. Uh, that, that should be the most instinctual. As soon as you hit the water, you know what you're doing and you're back in the boat. You don't have to think about it. And the paddle stroke is the same. I mean, it's, it's, that basic skill that's going to make a difference in your ability to cover water. I mean, I, I get the comment quite often when I'm uh, out paddling with people, they're like, God, you look like you're not putting out any effort. You know, I'm taking one stroke to every three of theirs. Uh, and I, I mean, the reality is, I mean, I don't get a heck of a lot of workout from paddling anymore because I've been doing it for so long and I've got the muscle memory to just keep doing that all day. But that's, again, it, it, I got good paddling instruction when I first started kayaking. And I, I just can't encourage people enough to, to get that instruction and to make that investment in that good quality paddle. You know, we want the Porsche. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so we, it, what else are, are, I? you know, the one thing you guys have, and we, we haven't really talked about, um, I know on the uh, Warner Paddles, dot com site you guys have a fit guide uh, yeah. that kind of shows people um so you, you got all kinds of stuff on that website as well as that uh great explanations of all of the uh the different paddles and styles and um i mean people can get a paddle in a wide range everything from the you know entry level up to um the uh like i said the high end the callistas and so on and also your your stand-up paddles as well right yep absolutely and we do have one line of stand-up paddles for the, those anglers where we do have it in the catch line drift as well for a, a stand-up hooked stand-up paddle as well oh very cool yeah. very cool um so guys we're gonna what we're gonna do 
is we will, uh, like I said, we're going to give this a day. So people, if you, if you're going, going to be, um, watching this as a replay if you're not watching it live please make sure you put in the comments that you watched it replay whatever thanks warner whatever just make a comment in there so you're involved in the conversation we know you're watching and then we will randomly pick somebody who participated to win one of these awesome new lever lock battles and I can't thank you guys enough for joining me here today. Thank I you told time. you the time flew by. Uh, yeah, it, believe it or not, we have been on for an hour. Uh, but, I mean, thanks to the people who are watching because we, we get so many great questions and, and, and all this great information from you guys. So I, I really appreciate you being here. And I will uh, forward you the information on our winner uh, sometime uh, tomorrow, if not at least by Monday, because I know it's the weekend anyway. Um, and uh, then we will notify the winner. And again, when will they be able to? Uh, when that that'll be shipped? When? Well, it'll ship out to the winner probably that first week in September. But anybody who's been watching this video, and you know, they can go ahead. They should go ahead and reach out to their local dealer, their local store and talk to them and those local dealers will probably start having it in their store early to mid September. They'll start shipping out of um, our production facility here in Monroe that first week of September. Fantastic. So they well guys, I'm going to drop you out. Uh, I do appreciate you being here again and uh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you again soon. Um, I'm loving the paddle. I love all my Warner paddles and I, I again, you know, if, if, if you're not, if you're a paddler and you're not using a Warner paddle, you're using an inferior product, in my opinion. So thanks, guys. Hey, thanks, Jim, so much for having us on the show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and watching our, our announcement. We're excited that you were all here. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. We'll see you guys on the water. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everybody. Take care. For the community. So, guys, I, again, I appreciate everybody here who has watched and was a part of this. Um, please, again, uh, type in replay. Please share this. That's the whole thing. We need the shares. That's what uh, gives us the greatest reach. And that's what allows us to have, you know, great guests on here like this who are willing to um, give away uh, awesome products. So please, 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 I can't ask you enough uh, to please share the videos. And not only that, but share our page. Uh, you know, I'd love to see I would love to hit a hundred thousand followers on our page. We're at 91,000 followers now. And you know, if I could get up to a hundred thousand followers, uh, that would be amazing. So anyway, that's it. I hope you guys all have a great weekend. If you are going paddling, please always wear your PFD and hold your paddle right side up. Take care. <laughs>